Okay, so I got a couple of different things going on at this site. Um, I'm in a pretty loud room here. This is a control room. Uh, these are uh, variable frequency drives for um, some pumps, some water pumps that come from a cooling tower. And then these are controllers for the fans on the cooling tower. So sorry if you can't hear me too well, but so anyways, this little uh, indoor unit here um, cools this room down. This room gets very hot with these controllers in here, and this one is not cooling, so we're gonna see what's going on with it. First thing, when I came in here to check the thermostat, I was showing um, no display on the thermostat. It was just a blank screen. So I'm gonna test the batteries real quick. All right, so this thermostat is set for 70 degrees. And it's currently 77 in here right now, so the unit is not running right now. I don't know why. We're calling for cool. It's not running. Those lines are really cold. This one's sweating a lot. This suction line's sweating a lot. Why we're not? Why this fan's not coming on? Well, if I do it manually, it comes on. I'm going to uh, that's right. I'm gonna go check the condensing unit real quick. We are out at this little unit here, and the thermostat is calling for cooling, and the unit is not coming on. So we're gonna look a little deeper here and uh, check our thermostat out. Um, and we'll get on this contactor and see what's going on with our low voltage. So, uh, alright, how much you guys with that? Here's a shot of these cooling towers. Uh, this basically acts as a big condensing unit for a lot of rooms. I think there's 40 something rooms that feed into these. So, uh, yeah, this is the, uh, the pump here, and we're changing out this pump here. It needs to be rebuilt, it was seized up. So we're working on this pump right now. It's back at the shop getting rebuilt. Um, the motor is good, but we're fixing the actual pump part. This part of it here. So um, we got this backup one that we're using right now, and only one of the towers is running. So there they are. Okay, so I dug a little deeper into this. The outdoor unit did end up coming on like a couple minutes later uh, after I just shot that last clip and. I wasn't even thinking of a time delay, but uh, the unit has a time delay on it. But it came on, I have the unit turned off, and this is still on auto, but this is going to be changing. I think I sourced the problem for this. Um, I pulled the front of it apart, um, just because I was really curious on why I had two extremely cold lines that were sweating, and I think this is our problem. The coil is completely frozen up. So what I'm going to do is run this fan motor and um, get this thought out, hopefully, <laughs> I guess soon enough. I mean, this is crazy. So, <laughs> this is our TXV, this is our metering device under here. So we're gonna get this uh, thought out and we'll put some gauges on it and see what happens from there. The thermostat wires were down here in this, uh, lock device, I had to pull them out, so we check low voltage, make sure we didn't short out the uh, thermostat, because this is, uh, see it's kind of just thrown together, and it's got, this is the uh, condensate drain, so it looks like it's going to be clogged, a bunch of water in here, and it's dripping all over the floor, so we can see what we can do to hopefully get this cleared out, so yeah, when I let this thaw out, and we'll get back on it. This is going to take a while to thaw out. What I think happened is when the batteries died, the uh, thermostat didn't go to like a default turn everything off. I think this thing just stayed running and running and running and running and running. So once this thaws out, we'll get back in here. I checked the filter. It's not too dirty, but I'm going to go ahead and change it anyways. I brought one in with me. So we're going to change that. So. We'll get going on this here uh, once it falls out. I wanted to show something else real quick. Any other HVAC guys out there might appreciate this. 
This is our TXV sensing bulb. Completely frozen to the line. <laughs> That's awesome. Alright. <laughs> Into the unit here, so I'm gonna turn this light on. I'm gonna be looking on the uh, inside of the coil there. This kind of gives me a view of what I'm looking at in here. Looks like only one side of the coil is for. Looks a little dirty. Hold on, I'll get my mirror. Alright, so we finally got this unit all thought out so we're going to get to work on it now and see what's going on. I wasn't able to uh, get the thermostat to reset from here so I just took it off the base there. Check, it, check the voltage down here. Everything's doing good so I'm going to stick this back on and see if we can get it to start cooling. I'm going to go check our charge. So I'm going to put this to cooling. 70 degrees on auto. There we go. Start it up. Liquid line is actually warm the way it should be. They were both cold when I first got here. Suction line's cool. This is warm. This is good. This is good. Alright, we're going to go out to the outdoor unit and uh, check the charge, change the filter, and see how it goes from there. Oh, yeah, that's nice. Alright, here we are at the unit, we've got the panels off, and then we're going to hook up to service ports down here to see how charge is looking like. Ball valves. Alright. See where we're going here. Let it run just a little bit. All right, so we uh, been letting this thing run, and uh, it looks like we're charged good here. Um, according to the charging chart here that the manufacturer gives, um, the liquid line temperature is at 105 degrees, and we're sitting about 240. PSI on the liquid line, so that gives us about we're a little under 240, so it gives us about a 9 degree sub cooling that we're looking for, which is exactly what I got when I put it in my calculator, which is on my phone, which is why I had to stop rolling there for a little bit. I did the calculation and I'm sitting at exactly a 9 degree sub cooling right now, so this unit is charged up just fine. Um, it looks like it's just going to be that that air filter was clogged, so um, yeah, that's it on this one, guys. We got a good charge here, so we're going to get out of here. Right now, we're just sweeping the gauges back in. Once that comes down to about a neutralized pressure, we'll go ahead and pull the low side off. Uh, that looks like it's getting pretty close there, so pull the low side off. Turn off the ball valve. That way I don't take any of the refrigerant with me. Alright. So that's it guys. This one's good to go.